Okay, well, this is the last ethical theory that we'll be discussing for this semester on uh, the last video that you'll have to watch. You have arrived. <laughs> be happy, right? All right, so we're going to be looking today at a version of feminist uh, ethics uh, that is known as ethics of care. Um, now, ethics of care is a feminist ethic. However, there are many people who would identify themselves as feminist who uh, have some, some pretty major troubles with it, uh, some problems with it. And we will see why that is as we, as we continue on, as we get going through here. Um, but uh, the, the theory that we'll be looking at to, uh, for this video is, is that of ethics of care. It's known as ethics of care. And ethics of care begins with, this, with the primary assumption, with a basic assumption, that men and women reason differently when it comes to ethics. Men and women reason differently when it comes to ethics. Now, this is primarily uh, uh, a sociological or psychological observation. Uh, that, that's what this is based on. And this, uh, this particular ethical theory um, really grounds itself or tries to ground itself in, in, in uh, not just philosophy, but also in the sciences of psychology and anthropology, uh, the social sciences or sociology, I mean, um, in, and uh, in basically trying to describe how human beings interact and then make some, make some not only observations of that, but some, some, uh, some guesses or some theories based off of that. Uh, now, ethics of care begins with the first primary uh, assertion that women, uh, men and women reason differently when it comes to ethics. There is a, in their, in their understanding, there is a masculine way to think, and then there is a feminine way to think. Now, before, uh, before you know, we uh, start um, rallying to, uh, to destroy the patriarchy here in, in, in this sort of thing, uh, let me just say that ethics of care is uh, based on generalizations. And just because a particular way of thinking is known as a masculine way of thinking does not mean that every male thinks that way. And it certainly does not mean that every female does not think, that no female thinks that way. But basically the idea here is just a, a large generalization uh, that, that this particular theory holds as masculine. It's a generalization of these character qualities uh, represent what we call a masculine way of thinking about ethics. On the other hand, uh, there, there's the feminine way of, uh, of thinking about ethics, and um, we'll get into both of them in a minute. But just because it's labeled feminine does not mean that every woman, every female thinks this way. And it does not mean that no male or man thinks this way. This is, a, again, a broad generalization, and, it, and really, there will be a spectrum of all sort of intermediate positions. Uh, but in, in, in the realm of uh, sociology, in the realm of, of psychology, they some, sometimes deem it necessary to establish these categories in order to give clarity to uh, the theory that they're trying to proclaim. So anyway, um, ethics of care says that there is a masculine way to think and then there is a feminine way to think when it comes to ethics. <clears throat> now, traditionally, the masculine emphasis has been on, for example, fairness. Whereas the feminine has been on partiality, um, the masculine on fairness, the, the, the feminine on based on partiality. Now, the, the reason for this, if we can imagine, maybe uh, a, a father and a mother. Um, and one, one example I like to give or one question I like to ask is, uh, let's imagine yourself if, uh, if you, know, you, you, have, you have a child who's in, let's say, third grade. And uh, your child, you get a phone call one day, you're at work, and, it, and as it turns out, your child has been in a fight on the playground. And they don't give you a whole lot of details on the phone, but they, they do say that, yeah, your, your, your son uh, punched someone else in the mouth and gave him a bloody lip. And we want you to come, come over here after school to have a parent-teacher conference with, with, the, with the principal and also with the, the parent of the other student and the other student. So you and your son uh, and the, the, uh, the other child that was involved in this altercation and their parents. Who would you rather have show up to that meeting? Would you rather have the father or the mother of the, of the child show up at that meeting? Um, and uh, most of the time, uh, although there are certain exceptions to this, most of the time people would say, uh, people would say I'd rather have the father there. And when I ask why, the, the, idea, here, the idea behind that is, is, is that dads tend to be 
a little bit more neutral when it comes to dealing with their child's been in a fight. Okay, well, your child's been in a fight. Um, uh, did you start it? They might ask. Uh, did you get your licks in? They might ask. Um, are we going to have this kind of trouble anymore? And they might settle on a, a reasonable solution that is fair to all parties and they could reach the conclusion. Whereas if, if, if you show up there and the other child's mother is there, there, there oftentimes is sort of this mama bear um, reaction that says your, your, your demon pick, was picking on my son and gave him a bloody lip, you know. Uh, and we want to see punishment exacted. There's this partiality, this, uh, this desire to be uh, partial to, to, the, to, to my own child. Now, when, when we stand back from both of them, we can see if, if that accurately depicts a masculine reaction versus a feminine reaction, we can see that both of them can be moral. They, they both have a, a merit to being moral. On the one hand, uh, we do want justice established uh, for all parties involved. On the other hand, however, uh, we do believe that people have the right to be partial to those who they're closest to, right? Uh, I, have, I have the ability to choose my children over everybody else's children. Uh, and, and, and that's a good thing. That actually preserves my children's life as opposed to me going out and trying to spread my, my resources by feeding all the kids in my neighborhood. Well, no, my resources are, resources are going to be dedicated to, to uh, feeding my children. So, uh, so I'm going to be partial to them. But, uh, but masculine and feminine. So typically and, and historically, it's been thought that fairness tends to be a masculine way of thinking, whereas partiality tends to be a feminine way of thinking. Um, masculine tends to emphasize rights, whereas the feminine tends to emphasize responsibility. Uh, rights versus responsibility. Uh, the masculine, in other words, looks at a situation and, say, and, and asks about it. What are my rights in this situation? What, what sort of treatment am I entitled to? What sort of treatment uh, is, is everyone entitled to? We have our, our rights, right? Um, whereas, in other words, and remember what rights do. Rights obligate the other party uh, in order to, uh, to uh, achieve a freedom or liberty for myself. Whereas the feminine way of thinking tends to emphasize responsibility. And the way that that's usually handled is instead of obligating other people so that I can have my freedom, responsibility does what? It does exactly, almost exactly the opposite. It, it, uh, it places an emphasis on my own obligations. What am I responsible for? Uh, and and doesn't, doesn't want to obligate others for that which I am responsible for. So, so, uh, so that's sort of been the way, the, in, in, in general thinking, um, been the feminine perspective of thinking. Rights versus responsibility. Rights obligating others, responsibility obligates ourselves. Uh, and we can see where both of these, uh, again, in a system of ethics would be important, right? Um, we do want to make sure that everyone has their rights or their rights are observed. But we also understand that with, when we have rights, we have a responsibility to observe, uh, allow other people's rights to continue as well. So there are both rights and responsibilities. Um, traditionally, according to ethics of care, a masculine way of thinking would be, would be that men uh, or the masculine way of thinking sees people as approaching one another as equals, that we are equals, that there's no, uh, that, there, that there's, uh, in terms of rights, in terms of protection before the law, in terms of value and worth, we are equals. Now, th there may be a sort of hierarchy of authority, but even within that hierarchy of authority, we, we put the, the emphasis on uh, that we are created equal, sort of uh, that sort of mentality. Whereas uh, a, uh, the feminine way of thinking does not emphasize, in fact, it emphasizes the, the fact that we are not all equals. It emphasizes one's own, uh, one's own sphere of influence or sphere of family. Um, and, and so not everybody is equal. I'm going to care for mine first and foremost over and against everyone else. So this goes back to the fairness and partiality as well. Um, the masculine tends to stress justice, that everybody gets what's coming to them, whereas the feminine tends to stress relationship. Um, maybe this is the, the best way that I've seen this in my own life is uh, my, my grandparents uh, had, they had um, three boys and a girl, and their oldest son, uh, my uncle, was, uh, was 
uh, kind of off his, uh, uh, he was kind of unhinged anyway. He, he, um, he ended up doing some time in prison. And um, my grandfather, after, because of what he did, sort of disgraced the family um, and, and uh, you know, caused others to sort of look down on him and things like this. My grandfather responded in a way that he's going to jail. He needs to get what's coming to him. He deserves his punishment. Uh, and my grandfather, in, in order to, I guess, intensify that punishment, never spoke to him again, uh, even till the day he died. Uh, he basically disowned my uncle. Um, whereas my grandmother, on the other hand, had a much different reaction to that. She was she she realized that what my uncle did was wrong. Uh, she she uh, was very hurt by it, but she did not want to sever that relationship. By uh, yes, she, he deserved to be in jail, but she went and visited him, and she would send him Christmas cards, and she would uh, she would go and um, and and when he did finally get out of jail, went back and, and received him back, and then after my grandfather died, he was welcome over to to uh, Christmases, family Christmases and, and with my grandmother and everything. So anyway, she sought to maintain that relationship and include him in, in her life as well. So justice versus relationship. Um, and then uh, the, the last contrast that we'll mention today for, between the masculine and feminine is that the masculine tends to stress autonomy while the feminine tends to stress interdependence. Autonomy versus interdependence. Uh, the, the feminine aspect of, uh, of thinking according to ethics of care is very communal minded or community minded. Um, and, and there have been some speculation by people who support ethics of care who would say, for example, that one of the reasons for this is basically for, from the woman's uh, experience in childbearing. Uh, because when she realizes that she has this child, that's relationship, right? She has this child. She's going to be partial to this child. Um, this child is her responsibility. Uh, she's interdependent with people around her be, uh, in order to care for her child. Whereas as the masculine way tends to de-emphasize those things because um, even when men do have children, they, they don't tend to... Uh, they don't tend to uh, have to have that sort of involvement, that level of involvement. Uh, even those who are very involved, uh, still they don't bear the child in their body. Uh, they they don't feel that same connection that, that the woman does. Um, and uh, so the man stress the, the men stress autonomy that each individual is sort of responsible for themselves, whereas the feminine uh, emphasizes interdependence. That yeah, I'm responsible for myself, but also uh, there are people out there that are depending on me and my community. Um, and just like somebody, when I was dependent upon them, somebody helped me out. I have to go now and help others out as well. And so, uh, but we see how both of these. Both the masculine and feminine are very important to, uh, to ethical systems. Uh, the masculine, which stresses fairness, rights, equal, uh, approaching one another as equals. Um, it stresses justice. It stresses autonomy. Um, those things are all very important when it comes to a societal vision of, of ethics. But, uh, but in a community or more individual or, or more um, specific interrelational uh, system of ethics, uh, the feminine stresses partiality, that, that you do favor those who you know and love better. Um, responsibility, the, the fact that we don't approach one another as equals, there is a hierarchy. Um, the you know, the stressing, stresses uh, relationships rather than total black and white justice. It stresses interdependence as opposed to uh, absolute autonomy and so forth. Uh, and that is a, that, uh, you know, ethics of care is a very, um, has, makes a very strong point that way. Now, the next step that they take, however, is this, and I think that this is something that we kind of fall into the trap to, the trap of. Um, uh, and, and they'll say this, that most of what has been written in ethics, uh, whether you're looking at Plato, Aristotle, whether you're looking at the Enlightenment philosophers or somebody in between, uh, you're looking at Kantian ethics, deontological ethics, you're looking at utilitarianism, most of what has been written in ethics has been written from a masculine perspective. A masculine perspective, a perspective that stresses uh, fairness, a, pers a perspective that stresses uh, individual rights and autonomy, a perspective that stresses justice and these masculine, uh, masculine uh, attributes that were mentioned before. Um, however, classical systems, while they may be good, only go halfway, according to ethics of care. And what we need to do 
instead of sort of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? You don't want to get rid of those systems altogether because there's a lot of good things in them. What we should do rather is to supplement them and augment them with a, re with a realization that the feminine aspect of ethics also is equally valid. It is not contradictory to the masculine, but rather it is supplementary and, 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 it, and it helps make, a more, make more sense of a holistic vision of our human experience. Uh, when we when we stress things like yes we should be able to um, we should be able to be partial to our own kith and kin yes we should take responsibility for for that which we are responsible for yes we should be interdependent so that we can grow stronger as a community and so forth uh, all the while not denying autonomy not denying justice not denying fairness either in in a, in a societal setting. Um, so so uh, classical systems need to be augmented and supplemented with the emphasis not just being solely on the masculine, but also on the feminine as well, and incorporate those things together um, so that we have both justice and mercy, so that we have a holistic approach to the, to the human experience. Now, I had mentioned at the beginning of this video that even though ethics of care is a feminist philosophy, there are many of those who would... Um, call themselves feminists who would be opposed to it. Now here's why I believe. Um, because feminism proper is based more on the idea that there is no inherent hierarchy to, uh, to the, the natural world. Uh, this is called the, the egalitarian assumption. That's the, the egalitarian basically means that there are no in, inherent authority structures in the world, that there's that the only authority structures that are there are things that we have superficially imposed upon society in order to, uh, in order to uh, help, help us get, get along better in society. Uh, however, none of those are natural. They're all superficial. They're all, um, they, they all come as a man-made sort of institution. Uh, egalitarianism says that we are functionally equals. Everyone is, is, is functionally equal. And feminism is built on that assumption. It's built on the idea that that there's that, that there are men and there are women, yes, but there's neither one are more important inherently than the other. Um, the, any any sort of hierarchy that we have in society is just simply a, a superficial and uh, synthetic, if you will. It's something we've added or made up and, and added to the way that we interact with each other. Well. Ethics of care, remember what the first assumption was there, or the observation there, the psychological or sociological uh, observation said that, um, that men and women reason differently when it comes to ethics. Now the feminists will look at this and they will say, okay, the problem with saying that men and women reason differently is that the next logical question is which way of reasoning is better? which way of reasoning is better. And, um, and if we are going to assert one as inherently better than the other, then what we are doing is we're actually creating a, a foothold, if you will, or a handhold so that, uh, so that this sort of sexism, this, uh, this, this, uh, pat this, this regimented patriarchal sort of um, approach to society can work its way into our thinking. Because if we say that, that men and women reason differently, and we say, okay, which one's better? And then we go, go along and say, well, the only one that really provides for a better societal um, interaction is the masculine, then, uh, then we have established an, an inherent hierarchy within nature of, uh, of the masculine being better. And so there are many who would, uh, again, identify themselves as feminists who would be opposed to this. Uh, they would say that, that, yeah, that's a problem that we, we don't want. That's a road we don't want to go down. Because as soon as we start saying they reason differently, then um, as soon as we start saying they re reason differently, then we have put ourselves in the position of indicating which one is better uh, and establishing a foothold for, uh, for a non-egalitarian system, <clears throat> an oppressive system, if you will. So, okay, that is uh, Ethics of Care, and uh, that concludes the, the videos for this course. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in class. Uh, make sure that you do the quizzes and the, all the activities that are listed there in, in, this, uh, in this session, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.